Welcome back to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. To touch on the last segment on today's episode, Trey Lance and what's going on with him in the Dallas Cowboys. Well, to give a little bit of background now on Trey Lance, and maybe a lot of people aren't familiar with him, is because he really hasn't played at, at all throughout his NFL career. He was traded to the Dallas Cowboys right before Dallas's last preseason game last offseason without consulting Mike McCarthy. Jerry Jones made that trade, so that is something um, worth mentioning there because he got hurt in Week 2 of that 2022 season where he was projected to be um, that starting quarterback for the 49ers and really get his opportunity there. He got hurt, and that never came into fruition. Then they discovered Brock Purdy, and he really just took over that role and really just pushed Trey Lance out because there was no room now really for Trey Lance to try and fit in there and get into a whole quarterback battle. I think the 49ers were pretty much set on Brock Purdy being their quarterback. So um, the timing of the trade and the timing of him getting hurt really, um, I guess, crippled Trey Lance just because um, he missed out on that. His opportunity was his um, in 2022 to be that starting quarterback for the 49ers. Then, unfortunately, he got hurt and now... In that timing of getting hurt, you know, it was a pretty severe injury. So by the time he got traded and rehabbed from that injury, it was the last preseason game, like I mentioned, for the Cowboys. So he really didn't get a lot of time to learn the playbook and try and maybe um, impress people in the offseason last year. So he really just rode the pine a lot or the majority of the whole season last year. And um, now heading into 2024 and this offseason, um, he has now had more time and all that time on the sidelines last year to learn the playbook, get acclimated to it, really know the ins and outs of it. And now starting in March or April, wherever he started training, he really got a full off season of really executing these plays, going out there and practicing this, going through the entirety of phase one, OTAs, and just voluntary workouts with the Dallas Cowboys now uh, where he is projected Uh, to be the quarterback three right now at this point where it stands on the depth chart. But um, he really hasn't just been given a chance at all um, yet in the NFL, which is crazy because he was um, drafted back in 2021 and still up to this point, almost three years later, has not... We haven't seen him play more than maybe two games in a row in the NFL in the regular season. So now gets to be a good opportunity for a good amount of reasons. But before I touch on those, Mike McCarthy commented on Trey Lance at OTAs last Wednesday um, and basically discussed Trey Lance's journey through San Francisco to now and how he views it and how he views Trey Lance. He said, my point is he's crossing that threshold and I've been very, very pleased. The athletic ability is top-notch. We've adjusted some of the things in his motion. I don't want to get into the specifics of that, but you can see the improvement in timing in young quarterbacks, and he's no different. Um, Then he went on to say that he needs more repetition, and the crucial thing um, on this topic is that Mike McCarthy said that Trey Lance will take a large part of the preseason reps by design and as discussed with Trey Lance because that has usually been Mike McCarthy's M.O. Um, In all the time that McCarthy has been there, Dak Prescott has um, never played a preseason game under Mike McCarthy, so that'll just give Trey Lance a greater chance to prove himself and show anybody what he can do out there on an NFL field. Like I mentioned last offseason, he got traded right before the last game of the offseason, so no real chance to do it there. Now he's probably going to start in every game this year of all the three games that they have in the preseason, so it is pretty exciting from that point to finally see where Trey Lance is in his career and how much um, better he has gotten through all these times just riding the bench for the 49ers or for the Dallas Cowboys and uh, Dak Prescott was also asked about it and he said all the right things you know encouraging Trey Lance and getting more repetitions praising the growth that he has seen in Trey Lance in his confidence and um, also looking forward to just having Trey Lance push him to be better was one of the biggest things in this quarterback room where they have Cooper Rush as well. He's listed as the number two ranked quarterback. So Trey Lance honestly has 
a lot of work to do. But what is interesting now is, based on all these factors, the main question is, is Trey Lance the best option that the Dallas Cowboys have in the post-Dak Prescott era? Um, I don't think it's too fast-forwarded to start having this discussion right now because of the actions we've seen. No developments in the contract negotiations with Dak Prescott. This could all, in all honesty, be the last season we have with the Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott being linked together. He could move on in 2025 if no contract extension is reached. Of course, as a free agent, he could still re-sign with the Cowboys, but um, it is likely that another team will offer him a lot more money, and if he takes it, you know, he's gone. And now you're left with Cooper Rush and Trey Lance, so... Is Trey Lance the best option post Dak Prescott? I think based on all the factors, I think the answer has to be yes. Trey Lance is the best option because you still really don't know a lot about him. Now that might seem contradictory, but um, you're going to see a good amount of him in the preseason. And I know the preseason isn't the regular season, obviously, much less the playoffs. But I think you already know you have in Cooper Rush. He has started when Dak Prescott has gotten hurt. Nobody knows what Trey Lance is probably going to look like. You have an idea, but in all honesty, nobody knows what Trey Lance is going to look like out there on the field with this whole new group of people and talent that he has around him. Maybe he surprises a lot of people. The most likely outcome is that he might not, just because also the Cowboys don't have an enormous amount of talent on the wide receiver position or the running back position. It wasn't going to be a great look for Dak Prescott with these pieces around him, much less also now Trey Lance, but I think with the circumstances that the Dallas Cowboys find themselves in, um, it is probably the best option because I honestly don't expect him to play at all this year, so he could have a whole nother offseason to really prepare and maybe be that quarterback one um, for the Dallas Cowboys in 2025, so you don't know what you have in Trey Lance right now, but I think that could be a good thing and a bad thing, like I mentioned. Surprising a lot of people and also just being a lot cheaper than Dak Prescott would obviously give the Dallas Cowboys another opportunity to go out in free agency maybe next year and get a lot more pieces. And also, in the discussion of choosing Dak Prescott, CeeDee Lamb, or Michael Parsons, if you do just accept the loss here and take your L and decide that you know you just can't afford Dak Prescott and make that decision already. It gives you more time to re-sign CD and re-sign Michael Parsons and ensure that those guys are going to be on the team to help your young quarterback potentially in Trey Lance. And you don't have to juggle with all these uncertain uh, factors heading into a whole another offseason and be late to the party yet again. So I know I'm talking a lot in advance right now and projecting a lot, but it is a serious question that I think, based on how the Dallas Cowboys have handled this whole situation, is a valid conversation to now start having because we just don't know what Trey Lance is going to look like. In the preseason, we're going to get a better idea, and it isn't like the Cowboys to go out and just get another starting caliber quarterback. I think they'll settle with Trey Lance if he wows them, if he doesn't wow them, and It'll just be maybe a transition period based on how he plays. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, I think you just have to accept it now at this point. Trey Lance is probably the best option that the Cowboys have at the quarterback situation after Dak Prescott. But um, I'm sure they won't obviously admit that right now. But it is something worth noting right now heading into a very crucial 2024 season for the Cowboys and how everything plays out and how different it could look in 2025 if the chips fall where they may but a lot still yet to be played out and executed but that is the conversation that is starting to be had right now I believe um, but with that we will leave that there and that'll be it for today's episode of the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast thank you guys all for tuning in and as a reminder please like follow and subscribe to the show Um, as well and also checking out us on other social medias like facebook instagram x and tiktok for more of this network's content if you want to see more of me and this show check out the gsmc sports network channel and the gsmc podcast network channel on youtube for youtube shorts that are posted daily 
full live recorded episodes are all found on both of those channels and individual segment videos. If you don't have time to rewatch a whole episode, the individual segments are all on there on both channels. And as a reminder, please remember to tune in every weekday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time for more football conversations and topics around the NFL with me, Manny Maradiege, as your host. Thanking you guys once again, and I hope to see you guys all back here again joining me tomorrow. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. God. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Yeah, damn, ain't that great? Nice. I don't wanna go.